Hello pop music fans, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allison and today we are listening to Lana Del Rey's brand new album, Blue Bannisters. This album was suggested to me by someone on TikTok, so if you don't follow me on TikTok, definitely go check it out. I'll link it in the bio. And this will be my first full Lana Del Rey album that I am experiencing, and I am experiencing it on release day, which is really special. I am very pleased that you guys will be joining me along on my first journey of listening to a full Lana Del Rey album. I've listened to songs from Lana Del Rey, but never a full album, so this will be an interesting experience to find out what a Lana album is like. So let's get right into it. The first song is called Textbook, which I actually really like. It's interesting, it's text space book, not just textbook. That's interesting. Let's listen to it. Have my back. You got a thunder outside. I'll try to have one too. I'll do this dance with you. This melody is Team by Lord. And honestly, production is also Team by Lord. Anyways. Just the way I would different could set me free. The rhythm of this song kind of feels all over the place, definitely in a fascinating way, but it's a little disorienting, I will say that. Wow. Okay, I could tell that song was about a lot of different things. Um, I'm sure I didn't pick up on all of them. Uh, the lyrics were touching on a lot of different subjects, so I don't think I could quite follow a simple storyline. That one's going to take a few more listens. But I appreciate that she opened the album with a song that seems like it's about a bunch of different subject matters. And from what I gather, I think that's something that Lana does fairly frequently. It's not completely common, but it's not uncommon for her either. So I like that the album opened with a song that isn't as straightforward as a lot of traditional pop songs are. So that's definitely unique. Everything about Lana is unique in some way. I really like that. Next song is called Blue Bannisters, the title track. Oklahoma. Is she from Oklahoma? Jenny was smoking by the pools. We were riding with me. I wish I understood the metaphor of the blue banisters or the banisters in general, what they represent. I'm not sure if I know because um, it wasn't really clear throughout the song. At least to me, I don't pick up on metaphor right away. It takes me a while to think about it. Um, but at the end, uh, her sisters painted her banisters green and gray. Um, and I don't know what that means, what those colors mean to her, or what the significance of the banisters is in general. If anyone has ideas about what this is about, please comment down below and let me know. I would be interested to hear your interpretation of this song. The next song is called Arcadia. Very interesting. Oh, I love the My track. body is a Something about that instrumental did sound very American to me. I think it was the combination of the trumpet and maybe something else going on there that had kind of an old school military style to it. Um, so I did a quick Google search to find out where there are places called Arcadia because I'm from Pennsylvania. We have an Arcadia here, but I know that there are probably a lot of Arcadias. And I was correct because I have found that Arcadia can refer to a variety of places, including Australia, Greece, Ukraine, and basically every state in the United States Looks like it has at least one Arcadia. So that's interesting. There's also one in Argentina, Canada, Egypt, South Africa, Zimbabwe, and a plane on Mars is also named Arcadia. So I kind of like that this song 
can apply to anyone who is near any of the Arcadias across the world. I don't know exactly which one Lana is referring to, but no matter which Arcadia you are from or live in the area of, you can relate to this song, I guess, um, <laughs> geographically at the very least. So that was a very interesting song instrumentally. Lyrically, I think Lana's lyrics are a little bit confusing to me. And I think that's probably just because I'm not used to her style. I haven't heard a lot of songs by her. And the ones that I have heard are the singles. And I feel like the singles are more straightforward in their message and their theme. Whereas um, some of the songs, the deeper cuts on her album, are a little bit more layered. At least I can get this sense, but I don't know exactly what she's talking about, especially since she makes so many specific references to things that I'm not particularly familiar with. Anyways, the next song is an interlude, and it's called The Trio. I wonder if The Trio refers to the first three songs on this album, Textbook, Blue Bannisters, and Arcadia. I can see that being a possibility. But let's listen to the trio. I'm waiting for the third, the third one. Ooh, the echo at the end is cool. Maybe not an echo, but it, it sounds like you're just hearing it from another room where the sound is happening and you're out in the hallway or somewhere else and you can't completely hear it. That's how it sounds at the end. Um, that was wild. I totally needed that little bit of a pick me up because the first three songs were very slow. And so that totally caught me off guard that we had that awesome like Spanish like trumpet maybe. Maybe not trumpet. I'm not sure exactly what that was. Um, and then when that beat dropped, I was thinking, where did that come from? I did not expect that at all. I was surprised with the Spanish style music. But then when there was a heavy bass beat drop, that was insane. Um, I don't know what the third part of the trio is. Maybe it was something um, hidden uh, below the other musical styles that I mentioned. I'm thinking that the, it's called the trio because there were three different musical styles and maybe the, the bass layer is her traditional style and I just didn't pick up on that. But if you did pick up on exactly what the trio refers to, let me know in the comments. Okay, the next song is called Black Bathing Suit. I like that title actually. Ooh, sound effects. The piano is cool. It sounds like a haunting lullaby. Quarantine. I like the quarantine reference. And if this is the end, I want a boyfriend. I think we can kind of all relate to that. Anyone who was single during the pandemic, if this is the end, I want a boyfriend. Because if things are going to go completely wrong, at least you can have somebody with you to make you feel a little bit less bad about how things are going. So I think that's a very relatable line. I'm tired of this shade To my soul through this black bathing suit You don't know me Cause I sing like an angel I really like that one. I think that was a little more straightforward than some of the others so I was able to understand it a little bit better on the first listen. And I really like that. I especially like the instrumentation of the production I thought it was particularly unique I think her songs always sound unique but I thought that one was very special I really like the sound of that and I need to point out when she says looking at me looking over at you she says it like looking at me looking over at you so I want to say to Lana bless you the next song is called if you lie down with me her voice sounds very interesting in this one. It's definitely different. I can't tell what she's doing with it that makes it sound so different. 
but I like it. Light me up like the Fourth of July. Once, twice, three times a guy. I... Another amazing brass section feature on that one. I've never seen an artist use brass the way that Lana does. I think it's part of her whole old school style thing. And I actually really like it. I think it's really great. The next song is called Beautiful. First she was young and beautiful and now she's just beautiful, I guess. Let's listen to it. Ooh, like a music box. If I could be more like you, I would, but I can't. And I'm glad about that. Beautiful, beautiful like you. I like that that song was just the piano and her voice, and I think the piano was doing a lot of interesting things during that song, which I appreciated. I also want to know a little bit more about the Boo Period reference, because I know it's a reference to an artist. I'm thinking Van Gogh, but I'm not actually sure. Um, so if anyone knows more about the reference to the Boo Period, let me know. That was a really beautiful song called Beautiful. I especially like the way that she sings beautiful. It is beautiful. The next song is called Violets for Roses. I was trying to make a woman change and trade her violets for roses. You made me trade my violets for roses with their masks off, and it makes me so happy. I like the line about the girls in their summer dresses running around with their mask off. I think that is so pertinent to this time, and it wouldn't be relevant any other time except in 2021, and I like that. I really like that song. I like the piano and a little bit of strings here and there, and the metaphor of a man making something beautiful about you becomes something different that's still beautiful but maybe a little more common and less unique and special than it was before. So I like that one a lot. The next song is called Dealer. Oh. Please don't is that Lana or is that someone else? That does not sound like her. Is there like an effect on her voice or is it someone else? So I think that song is about a drug addict who has gone missing and doesn't want anyone to find them through their dealer. And Lana, I guess, doesn't want to live, which when she screams out, I don't want to live, I feel like that needs to be like a TikTok audio meme, whatever minor inconvenience happens, I don't want to live. <laughs> so relatable, not, like not seriously, but in a meme kind of way. I cannot relate to that song at all. I do like the vibe and the groove of the production. I really liked that a lot, especially since a lot of the other songs are more stripped back. And this one was a little bit of a driving beat, which I appreciated. Um, but other than that, I, I really can't relate to those lyrics at all. But I know that there are people who can. And so I always like when an artist touches on a bunch of different themes so that they can connect with as many people as possible. The next song is called Thunder. I like this. It's like Disney Fantasia or something like that. You act like fucking Mr. Brightside when you're with all your friends. Just do it, don't wait. The guitar and the violin make it. Oh. 
I really like the instrumental on that one. The drums, the, the guitar, and the piano, and the little bit of violin, and all the lyrics. That one was definitely one of my favorites. I really like that one. It had a kind of closer energy, like album closer energy, and it's only song 10 of 15. Um, so we have five more songs left. So let's move on to Wildflower, Wildfire. Not to turn into a wildfire Like the others, baby, burns, burns, burns. Hmm. So from what I can gather about that song, I think it was about Lana when she was a child being burned in a wildfire and ending up in a hospital. That's what it sounded like to me. And I'm probably completely wrong on that one. But that is the image I had in my head. And I don't know why. It's probably not accurate at all. But especially towards the end, that's what I was starting to think. Because the whole time I was thinking, I don't know what this song is about. And then she's talking about being in the hospital. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what that was about. That one was, that one was a lot. I think I need a lot more time with that one to be able to understand that if it's not about Moana being burned in a wildfire as a child because I have no idea what else it would be about. <laughs> the next song is called Nectar of the Gods. Wild on your baby, fucking crazy like you never knew. I get wild. Fucking crazy like the color blue. I would describe blue as a wild sweet world. And now I am lost. Okay, this is how I'm feeling at this point in this album. I'm feeling like this is a very long album. It's 15 songs. The runtime is about an hour. Most of the songs are at least four or almost five minutes. And when we get to the end with some of these slower songs, it's a little bit harder for me to focus because I, I am just really tired from the whole week. And that's just where I'm at now and trying to figure out how the color blue is wild and crazy is kind of making me wild and crazy because in my opinion blue is like the calmest least wild color in the world so I don't know what Lana is on trying to use blue all over the place in this album even when it doesn't make sense such as in this song I don't know how blue is wild and crazy other than the fact that it rhymes with new. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. The next song is called Living Legend. But she knows I'm a monsoon. My living legend. Towards the end there, it kind of sounded like they put her voice in a vocoder and then just like wailed on an electric guitar. That's what it sounded like. It was very interesting. It was like a scream almost, but also it sounded like an electric guitar. That was wild. I really liked the lyrics of that one. I think it was, it was very sweet, the, the way she put that, calling someone a living legend for all the things they do and all the ways they move. And I thought it was a rather romantic song that I just, I liked that one. That was nice. The next song is called Cherry Blossom. But you don't tell no one, you can tell me. Angelina, your supermom tree. I think that song sounded very nice. I love the contrast of the rich low notes of what you don't tell no one you can tell me 
and the really delicate higher notes of the cherry blossom on the sycamore tree. I loved listening to the range of her voice in this one and it sounded beautiful throughout. I like that one a lot. The last song on this album is called Sweet Carolina. Sounds like a wedding song. Love you like God. Crypto forever screams your stupid boyfriend. Fuck you, Kevin. We love baby blues. I passed me and you. I loved her voice in that one. She sounds like a Disney princess. I don't know why she doesn't sing like that more often. Um, can any of you Lana fans comment any more songs where she sings in that style where she sounds like a 1930s Disney princess? Because it's the most beautiful I have ever heard her voice. And I kind of want her to sing like that on all of her songs. I loved that one a lot. And I also thought the lyrics were really sweet as well. So that was one of my favorites for sure. So that is the Blue Bannisters album. Overall, I would say there were some songs that I really liked and other songs that maybe need some time to grow on me and definitely didn't strike me the first time I heard them, but they could totally grow on me later. I was very surprised to not see White Dress on this album. Um, that was actually the reason why I wanted to listen to this album is because I had heard White Dress because of the controversy around it. A lot of people hated it. A lot of people liked it. I wanted to see if I hated it or liked it. And I liked it. I liked the song White Dress. So I'm surprised that it's not on this album. But alas. So let me say some of my favorites from this album. I really liked Black Bathing Suit. Beautiful. Violets for Roses. Thunder. Living Legend, and Sweet Carolina. I would say those were my favorites on this album, but I think all of them had something unique about them or they told a interesting perspective of a story. So I am interested in Lana's work and based on which songs I like, I want you guys, you Lana fans, to tell me which other songs I should listen to or maybe a Lana album you want to see me react to. And maybe I'll do another Lana reaction video, depending on if you guys like and comment on this video. Definitely make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more reactions. I have some very exciting reactions coming up. Two of my favorites that are coming up are Red Taylor's version and Adele's album 30. Uh, so those will be some albums that I'm reacting to soon, along with um, any suggestions that I really like or any other new releases that I think I want to check out. So definitely make sure to subscribe, like this video, comment what you want me to react to next. Thank you so much for watching and bye!